What's up, world? You already know who it is, Maurice Paramore, back with another episode on your favorite director podcast. Super <laughs> excited today because I got a good brother with me, special yes, guest, comedian, actor. I mean, this guy's brilliant, man. Great talent. And I welcome Kobe Jack to the show, man. Thank you for coming, my brother. Thank you, man, thank you for having me, man. Anytime, anytime, yeah. anytime. Appreciate that, man. How how's everything, man? How did how the year treating you so far, man? So far, busy, man. Yeah. And we'll be like what nineteen days in, and already yeah. just working, man, grinding. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, I've been in L.A. for the first time at the beginning of the year, so that was okay. amazing. That was amazing. So how was the trip? I mean, I know that flight. That's a five and a half five and a half hour flight. Yeah. If you went straight there. Yeah. Are you a no, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't even go straight there. You know, a couple. I had a layover. Oh, yeah, so. a couple of layovers. Okay, you know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> Flight got canceled with Frontier. They had to hurry up and just jump the American Airlines and just and took whatever. Yeah, took yeah. whatever. You know, let's let's go back. What did you start first? Being a comedian or acting? Like, go back to like high school. Yeah. Was you the always the funny guy? <laughs> yeah, I was the class clown. Yeah, I always liked attention. Okay. Um, that's a good thing. But what, what, where it all started at was, um, I was um, ten years, not you might say eleven years now. Twenty eleven, I was working in the kitchen. Okay. Um, you're okay to me. She's like, listen, my brother do stage plays. Okay. I'm like, all right, cool. But I never acted before. I had no acting experience, and she just kept bugging me about it. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna go meet this guy. Met him, he had an um, audition for these stage plays. So I'm like, all right, what's this, like a Tyler Perry stage play? I ain't know right. of it. So um, he had me read for him. Right. And he's like, no, he's like, change your voice up, sound like this, read it this way. So I wound up getting a part. Mm. Gave me the part, no acting experience, no nothing. Really? This was March 2011, okay. two weeks of the meeting in the cast. Around the cast, I'm meeting everybody, we going to rehearsal. Somebody named Patrice calls me up. She was, um, <laughs> shout out to Patrice. She calls me up two weeks later. She said, hey, Kobe, um, I'm singing at the Mill Creek tomorrow okay. night, tomorrow, which was a Sunday. Okay. So she called me a Saturday. She's like, can you come support me? Uh-huh. I said, yeah, that's cool. She said, before she hung up the phone, she said, by the way, I signed you up to do comedy. Mm. She hung up the phone on me. Really? So I told people, I was like, yeah, one day I'm going to do comedy. Kevin yeah. Hart, make this look easy, but... I ain't you wasn't really locked in yet. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't locked in. Ever since she signed me up to do comedy, I got on stage that first time, and I loved it. You loved it from I there. I loved it from there, man. So, so it was great. Let me ask you about, you know, let's stay on uh, the comedy side for a minute. Okay. So, boom. She says she signs you up. Now, when is that? When is the show? The next day? Yeah, or the very next day. The very next day. So, how, how does it work? Like, do you plan your material? Are you writing something? Or yeah, you I was writing stuff there, and just, just winging it. I remember I always broke stuff because I kept saying, one day I'm going to get on stage. That's what I told the cast when okay. the meeting. I was like, yeah, one day I'm going to uh, get on stage and do comedy. Kevin Hart make it look easy. So. Like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's I had these uh, just a couple of jokes. You know, mm-hmm. talked about my family. Um, got on stage, man, and I loved it, man. Yeah. I was rock. I was rocking that first time. So okay. the guy was, they got this thing where when, when the host gave you the light, that means wrap it up. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Wrap it up. You got at least less than one minute. The, you know what I mean? Wrap, wrap, it wrap it up. Okay. I didn't know what he was doing. He came on stage and stood next to me and whispered in my ear. I got the mic. Yo, man, you got to go off stage. <laughs> oh, <my God>. yeah. <laughs> you were just rocking like, look. I was, I was like, oh, that's a good feeling. I got yeah. the crowd laughing. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> that's cool. I like this, man. That's dope. Now, now do you like, do you base what you're going to talk about on like the crowd or is it just like if it's older folks if it's younger if you see a bunch of church oh, folks, yeah. folks is yeah. it like all right i'm gonna hit them with this yeah. or yeah, just gonna rock. your crowd is different mm-hmm. i mean you can't go in front of an all-white crowd and talk about roaches right i don't know what the hell you talking about <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. Roaches. <laughs> right 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 you know what I'm saying so, yeah, you got to know your crowd that your older crowd mm-hmm. is different from your younger crowd. Yeah. I noticed the younger, I did, um, I did a uh, I did Cheney one time, mm. I had to change my jokes up okay. so I, that can relate to them. I can't go and um talk about certain things. So I'm an 80s baby, you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. I can't go in there and talk to them about that. They 1920, yeah, I can't kids. talk to them about me having kids because and the struggle of being a dad, they don't know about they don't that. Understand my that. older crowd know about that, so. You work it like yeah, that. Yeah, work it like that. Have jokes for them. Mm. Now, are you a um, are you a clean a clean uh, 
comedian or are you explicit? Yeah, like, I can do both. I've done do done, done done churches. I've done done you know <laughs> parties. <laughs> That's for people that was older. I do it all, man. Mm. Now, now, how do you go about like your 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 set? Now, if you have a 15 minute set or a 30 minute set do you mm-hmm. kind of like i mean do you have material that's like all right i got a 15 minute material or what if you got 13 minutes and now you still got two minutes left are you winging it like how does that how do i don't you think really I, it's about a roundabout somebody say hey i need you for 15 minutes and i got like 12 minutes then that's, that's cool man as long as that i'm funny that's cool that's all because i remember it was times like i like i said i started i started comedy in 2011 i ain't i ain't really had that much material okay so after I did my first time on stage, um, that was my, my, my best time I did. Okay. First time I did good. Two months later, I did okay. Okay. Five months after that, I did horrible. Mm. So for the first three years from 2011 to 2014, I was quitting comedy. I used to get. I used to be like, man, I keep bombing on stage. Bombing on stage means that you're doing horrible. Okay. So I used to be like, man, I'm, I'm, I quit. But I always had active. Cause okay. I was going to these auditions yeah. and they was like, "Oh, this guy good." Yeah, I'm like, "Yeah, they put me in all the stage plays." Right, so, so it's like meeting right. people. You know what I'm saying? But I always had acting, but comedy I kept um, just messing up. I'm like, this, this the first time I was like, "Cool, first time on stage." But right. anytime after that for three years, I did it's probably comedy good. like ten times in like three years. Okay, I kept quitting. I was like, "No, the hell, this <laughs> And I took a workshop with a guy named Two Ray. Two Ray is the first person to bet Kevin Hart on his first stage. Oh, really? Back in like 97, 98. So, King of Philly. Shout out to Two Ray Gordon, man. Mm-hmm. Great dude. Took his workshop. He said, you got to keep writing. Stay consistent. Got to keep rocking. Keep now, rocking. what would you can, What would you um, say led to your, your bombing? Is it, yo, they just not getting my jokes or my timing wasn't right or you just Oh, wasn't it was good? all of it. They wasn't Everything. getting the jokes. Dude, I didn't even know what. <laughs> Most of the time, I go on stage and just try to. Try to wing it and mm-hmm. that, and just did bad, man. Yeah. Trying to do crowd work, it went bad. You know, write the jokes I've writ- I, I written down. <laughs> Shoot, just try to just just to time it up. It didn't no timing, so it was all that, and I had to learn all that, man. Right. Well, I wanna. I usually talk about this a little later, but since we on it, how did what did that do to you as a as an artist? You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you know we'll jump into the acting as well, and me as a filmmaker, like we go through those stages of. Um, being discouraged, right? Where it's yeah. just like, yo, all right, it's not working. It's not adding up. I feel like I'm supposed to be on another level. Like, what keeps you going? What is that that drive? Because, like you said, it's going to be like, all right, you know, I'm quitting. I'm just going to get this job and, and just go about my life. Right. What keeps you in the in the fight? Um, I had a, like, I, a burning desire for it. I, I could, there's times I couldn't stop thinking about it. I'm watching comedy shows mm-hmm. there's times i used to go to shows some comedians knew me i used to stand in the back and watch mm-hmm. so i'm learning and every time i go i'm like yo they making this they really want me to get yeah. on stage yeah i really want to get on that stage and try to because they making it look so easy mm-hmm. so it was like it was just haunting i'm like i gotta do I this gotta get back. i gotta get back no matter mm-hmm. what did you did you do you notice when it started to turn around from you said you got with uh toure toure yeah toure um but now, when you when you stepped away, was it like a, a long break, or was it just like a uh, couple months? Then I go back, months I go yeah, back. Yeah, about five, six months. Six, and then it was just like locking yeah, in, locking in. Mm. After I took his workshop, I still was like, all right, let me start hitting these stages. Mm-hmm. What were some things that he was like teaching you? What you think you was you wasn't getting at first that you started to get with his uh, like workshop? Like you said, like timing, yeah, timing, definitely timing. Time another joke, how to say a joke, how to space out the joke. Mm-hmm. Um, if you got a good joke, that's probably um, about a 30 second joke. How can you take that 30 second joke and make it longer? Mm, stretch it out. Yeah, stretch it out. Stay on this one topic, just stretch it out. Keep adding to it so the crowd can get the punchline, add more punchlines to it. Mm. So that's called when 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 you going from um, three minute set to a five minute to a seven to a ten now to a fifteen minute set mm. then now to a to after about what twenty twenty you got twenty five minutes you a headline you pretty much got that's your show yeah right? yeah, yeah 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 you, you good now. <laughs> it's like look we we done made it baby you made it man so <laughs> now the time the time wise like the length of your performance did did the long like when you started to get into a longer set or if somebody said you know i need a 15 minute set and, and your your first set was maybe only five three minutes something mm-hmm. like that 
Did that ever scare you? Like, oh, maybe I'm going to be up there too long. Or you never, you kind of grew into that time. Yeah, I, I, I grew into that time. I remember I used to have this, this one joke I did. And I don't know how I got, it was like a good seven minute joke about my um <laughs> going to the barbershop, my kids and my <laughs> and me. Uh-huh. So I, that was the only good joke I had. Sometimes at the top, <laughs> I used to freestyle at the top, do crowd work right. and just ain't anything off the top. Talk about the place, uh-huh. then get into that. Okay. That was it. I always had a good, I had a good seven, but I can turn it into 10. Yeah, too. <laughs> it's so. like, all right, now good. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so, you was doing comedian, you were doing comedian work, mm-hmm. and you were still doing acting. Yeah. Um, do you remember, so you said you started with stage plays. Yeah. Do you remember your first film? Like, do you remember that transition? Um, friend of mine, friend of mine, I grew up in the neighborhood with, with her name, um, Alicia Dominique. She wrote a movie, I think it was called The Longest Weekend. Mm-hmm. And when I, um, she gave me the script, we started filming. You know, theater is loud. Yeah. You know, and when I started, um, she, when they called action, I was loud. Yelling, basically. I was giving, <laughs> it was like, thing. whoa, calm it way down. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> too much energy you gotta this is film you gotta tone it down yeah, so. yeah. it's a more intimate performance yeah 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 so making that transition from projecting <laughs> to the crowd so they can yeah, get into yep. just being in front of the camera like all right this is just like you said it's, yeah. like a, it's a more intimate um so i need to know about but i'm like that's you know these steps of learning this journey with acting and comedy i learned a lot got you some people prefer um theater some people prefer film mm-hmm. um do you prefer one or the other? Is the do you appreciate a different kind of performance? Like you said, some people it's like being a, a hip hop artist, right? Some people love to perform. Right. Some love just sitting in the studio all day. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This what um what works for you more? Like, do you like performing in front of the crowd, or you just like kind of like working on it, working on it until you get these takes right? You know, you got the opportunity to do another take, another take. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna lean more towards theater. Because okay. it's live, it's right there, you know. Right. And I learned with doing that, that um, that made me stronger for film. Okay. So with learning the script, and, you know what I'm saying, and, and getting the lines down and studying the character and character development. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to speak about that, like ca- character development, because theater, you have to memorize the whole play. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just about, yeah. Almost, you know what I mean? Um, film, you can kind of break down your scenes mm-hmm. as you shoot and stuff like that. Um, what do you do to kind of prep for theater? You know what I mean? Like developing your character, but just the memorization. Is it certain like a process that you have to do that's a little different in film? Um, oh, I just like to say the lines over and over again. But in rehearsal, because we have rehearsal, so this is where I know and I learned that it's okay to mess up at rehearsal. Mm-hmm. Get the, get try to get the lines and say it with your um partner and just mess up the first few weeks. Right. And so I'm like, I always had to tell myself that's all right, sorry, it's rehearsal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't wait. And I seen people um get to like the last two weeks of the show and they still still ain't got the they lines. still ain't got. I'm like, come on, man, <laughs> come on, man. Y'all know. And that. and and that can help or hurt other character uh, oh, yeah. actors in the in the play. So how important is you know. A scene partner and, and and working with people that's season and that's bringing it, you know. I asked mm-hmm. uh, another actor this: Do you feel like it um it helps your performance when your scene partner is bringing it, or you just feel like you're gonna do what you do regardless? Like, how does that help? It, it, it definitely helps, but um you gotta be with me. I, I just say I, I got a gift of just I can improv. Okay. I learned to improv. If I see somebody, you know, messing up, drop their line, either I can help them pick it up okay. or just say something. Um, <laughs> I, remember, I had some shows where a guy was getting dressed in the back, and I, I wasn't the director, but I told a girl to go out there and try this. Okay. And she went and killed it. And the person who was the director was like, that was amazing. Mm-hmm. Gosh, wait, that was, you went out there because the crowd was just sitting. Mm. Like, go out there and say this and interact with the other person that's already on stage just sitting there mm, okay so and it and it worked and it worked out and it worked so that's important um feeding off the crowd oh yeah feeding, feeding off, off, the off crowd. each other yeah you know what i mean girl and what to do i'm like i promise you it's gonna work mm. the and crowd is gonna laugh 
Cause he in the back getting dressed. He, he had another. Ready. He wasn't ready. And the lights are already up. And you got this guy sitting on stage. You just got off stage. I'm like, just go back out there. Mm. Just, just, and just try yeah, something. Try something. And it so worked. she was already out there performing. Yeah, she had to leave stage. She's supposed to leave, and the guy's supposed to come right out. Okay. He did. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. So it's like, oh <laughs> man, we got to. And I wanted show. to go back out there so bad, but I'm like, my scenes was already done. Oh, uh, okay. So, so I, I used the girl. They just. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. You started um. And now, do you still do both? Are you still trying to... I stopped to... doing stage plays. I, I toned it down a lot. Okay. Because in the theater world, um, you either get a great director and they go to get a script and the script is horrible. Okay. Or you'll have great actors and the script is horrible. Or you'll have a great script and the actors are horrible. Mm -hmm. So it was like, gosh, Lee, it's not I was, blended. I was, it was, it was just, <laughs> it wasn't working, man. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of directors be trying to get people new work and try to get new people who never um, act before, trying to get them experience and try to get their feet wet. But sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, it, it ain't working. I'm in mean, yeah. it like, I'm in this rehearsal. I'm ready to quit. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't usually quit <laughs> nothing once I commit to something, and I say I'm gonna do it. That's I never really quit, but I'll be like. Feel like you kind this of place gonna be trash. Yeah, you you can feel. <laughs> I, it. You I feel know. it already. I'm like, this yeah. place gonna be trash. You know what you're dealing with. He will be like, "Cole, I need you. Somebody dropped out. Play in four weeks. Can you do it?" I, I say, I, I really say no to nobody. I tried. I need to. I need. I, yeah. I learned to start saying no to people. Yeah. I was like, "Yeah, I'm the yes guy. Cole, I got you." Mm. I get the rehearsal. I'm like, "This place gonna be horrible." Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, four weeks away. I'm just getting here, and they still on 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 their scripts." Yeah. It's like, come on now. I'm like, nah, we rehearsing this. I'm like, living room, we got the wig. I'm like, nah, y'all need mm. a, a, a space, a event space. I'm like, yeah, this way ain't going to be good. It ain't going to work. I wound up doing it, but I'm like. You could just tell. And I want to speak about that because um, about saying no, about the energy and all of that stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. when, hmm, like, all right, you, you, you're working on a project. Right. If you're not in it, if you're not into it completely right mm -hmm. does that mess up your performance a couple of times it had i ain't gonna say it messed it up but i didn't give it my all you didn't give it your all i knew i could a lot of times could have went there with that character and i just pulled back mm -hmm. so that 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 happened a few times yeah when i started acting in 2011 to, to i'm gonna say now i've done over 40 stage plays mm. Really? I was a stage play guy. Like, he was locked in. I was locked in. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. I've been over 40. Now, let's get into like, <clears throat> you know, like typecasting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about typecasting? Do you feel like people get typecast because of their look, um, because they only present they, themselves a certain way, or casting directors just don't have vision? What do you think a lot of the issues with like typecasting? Um, play. It can it can it, it can sometimes um, mess up a lot of things. A lot of people that a lot of casting directors don't know what the hell they're doing sometimes. Yeah, real rap, real rap. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm glad I was telling people that don't cast me for the funny role. Okay. Yes, I'm a comedian. I never really wanted to do any a lot of comedy. Got you. I wanted to to do a lot of drama. I wanted to Serious to stuff. to tap in with you know um, deep stuff. You know, making myself emotional, mm -hmm. getting getting myself to that point. Mm -hmm. So I, I really, I was like, I enjoy this. This is what I love to do. Right, right. So I'm like, I, like, I want to go far with this. I don't want to just be the funny guy all the time. Right. It's like oh, I'm gonna put Kobe in the funny stuff. Yeah, I'm like, no, nah, I want that funny role. When they be like, which role would you like? I'm like, I want this one. I want the guy who sat here and was a drug addict. Mm. It's like I don't see you playing that. Watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like that. You know, I always try to. I always try to put actors in a, in a spot that either they never been in before or people just mm -hmm. don't necessarily see them like that. Like right, exactly. Like you a comedy guy, it's like, all right, well, let's, let's put them in something that's, you know, a little wild or different or, like you said, a drug addict or whatever the case may be, just to see that person stretch more. Right, You exactly. know what I mean? Challenge themselves. Um, <clears throat> so you're doing your things. You're doing your thing. You're getting mm -hmm. roles and stuff like that. Um when 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 do you get to the point where it's like you know what i have to say no to this role say if it's just all right, everybody's put me in comedy and it's just like you know what 
that's not really propelling my career yeah. where I want to go. When is it time for an artist to, you know, start saying no, right? Because we independents, we trying to get into stuff, we trying to get our names out there. Right. Sometimes we taking a lot of work that we may or may not like. You know, is it is it okay for for artists to say, you know what, this this ain't for me? Do you yeah, think absolutely. It's, um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, something that you either not comfortable doing no more or it's the same thing mm -hmm. you know it's it, it's the same thing yeah just it's like i i don't really i don't do open mics anymore because okay. i'm like for what right a lot of open mics in philly is just a bunch of comedians that's the audience and they laugh at anything mm. i'm like how i know my joke work if you i don't even like what's the point of me i'd rather do a, a real show okay that i'm not on and ask for a guest spot Okay. Guess what is? Hey, I'm not on the show, but let me, you know, let me get five minutes. Let me go warm the crowd up. Okay. You know, while they still coming in, sitting down, or they eating, or that's what a guest spot is. Okay. So how do you how do you how do you necessarily find work in the uh, the comedy space? How does how does that work? Um, <laughs> I hit up a lot of a lot of promoters, a lot okay. of comedians, and just, um, I just inbox, yeah. call, email. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, my name Kobe Jack. I'm from Philly. Um. Y'all got anything open? Yeah. I send them a clip. Okay. You know what I'm saying? A lot. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Or I used to have this thing where, or a lot of comedians used to do, um, you got your own room. They got their own room, say in Dallas. They be like, hey, let's do a booking for booking. You book me, I book you. Bring me the Dallas, I bring you to Philly. Mm. So a lot of times that works. Okay. Uh, and sometimes that can be good and Watch bad because um, that comedian may not be funny when they mm. get here. Gotcha. I may not, they may not like me. Well, they're going to like me now, but right. a lot of times um, I did that before where it'd be a different area. It'd be a different area, and the guy be like, people be like, yo, that guy from Dallas wasn't funny. Right. Like, why'd y'all bring him out? Right. So I'm like, because <laughs> I wanted to go to Dallas. I've right. never been to Dallas. So right. it can be that'd be a booking for booking. Got you. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> well, speaking on, like, um, you from Philly? Yeah. Where yeah, you born and raised Philly. out there? Yep. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? the climate of the independent industry is you know let's talk about like the film the film world right how do you feel the state of the industry is right now do you think it's in a good spot um a lot of people are are you know leaving this area going out to atlanta going to cali yeah how do you just feel about the independent marketplace right now do you think it's in a good spot do you think it's oversaturated with people that's trying to be actors or filmmakers. What's your, what's your, what's your, some of your thoughts? I'm starting to think it is oversaturated. Everybody um, is just doing the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, and they just, oh, I see somebody else doing it. Oh my gosh, I seen this person doing it. Oh, let me try doing it. Seemed, and it's, that's another thing. It's like everybody just moving to Atlanta. Yeah, everybody. Everybody moving to Atlanta. You know, they gotta, <laughs> they gotta. Somebody hit me up a, a couple of years ago and said, "Yo, we may need a comedian down here for Philly Day." I'm like, I actually got that. Down here? What the hell is Philly Day? <laughs> Philly in Day Atlanta? in Atlanta. What is that? I'm like, there's a lot of people down here from Philly, so what we try to do is, I'm like, that's stupid. Yeah, it's like no, <laughs> Atlanta is Atlanta. Yeah, like, have Philly Day in Philly. Yeah, that's how I know everybody down there. One time I went down, I was like, dang, I might want to move to Atlanta. I'm like, nah. Nah, yeah. I went down there for the first time like two years ago. I'm like, yeah. Nah. <laughs> My first time down there was a couple months ago. And it's um, it's it's, it's just, it's a different energy. Yeah, it's a, it's you know a different I mean? energy. And it's, it's, um, it's busy down there. It is it is busy. You got to, it's, it's it has its own culture in there. You have to really adapt to, you mm -hmm. know, the energy, the culture out there. Um, just like any area that you you roll to, but do you feel like people think, all right, I moved to a new area, I got it popping, I can get it popping because I'm in this area, or do you feel like you still have to like, okay, put it like this: if you can't get it popping in Philadelphia, you think you can yeah. go to Atlanta and get it popping? Hmm. Not nine times out of ten, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, you, you just you ain't got it. You better have <laughs> Ti or, or Andre three thousand. Somebody better come be like you're that guy. <laughs> yeah, but I feel a lot of people they they move to different areas, and sometimes you you need to you need a, a different 
um, you need change, right? I think oh, yeah, change, absolutely. I think change is good. But I think people, I think where people fail, they're taking the same hustle or non-hustle that they mm-hmm. have here and they're trying to implement that in a different space and think it's going to pop just because they're in a different area. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. And it's like, I've seen cats that had hella hustle out here, went to a new state and took that same hustle and it just, it, it worked. I don't know. Right. They gravitated, the energy gravitated to them and they took off. Mm-hmm. But then I've seen a lot of people that had no hustle out here thinking everything is going to change when they go to Atlanta or Cali. Okay. And it's like, they don't work like that. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so uh, when we talk about the oversaturation and stuff like that, just like, have you seen people, because everything becomes a trend, right? When I was oh, yeah. doing, when I was in, when I was a hip hop artist, hardcore cats, everybody was doing like hip hop. When I was doing music videos, I seen mm-hmm. a lot of people picking up cameras, doing music videos, got into the film world. People were doing this, but then 10 years later, you barely see these yeah. cats still doing yeah. these things. So, have you seen cats like, all right, I'm like you said, Kevin Hart can do this. this is easy. Have yeah. you seen cats <laughs> try to get into the game and then bomb because they're only in it because it's trendy? Oh, yeah. And then they like, nah, this ain't it. Absolutely, man. Especially in the I know a lot of comedians now. I know a lot of comedians that was on Def Jam. Really? Yeah, that's like that, that. That that lost it, you know. Keep they, they they couldn't keep up. Um, shoot, some of them hitting me up. Really? I'm like, yo, I used to watch you once. Yeah, yeah, like you supposed to be bringing me up. <laughs> <laughs> you supposed to be my OG, but yeah, man, it, it, it it's a it's a lot of that. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of that. I say, man, especially yeah. in comedy, man. People think it's easy. And another thing, especially in the Instagram world, yeah, these people with these followers that they got these funny videos out. Yeah. They try to jump on that stage. It's different. They can't do it. Can't I do watched. It. I watched mm. these dudes. I didn't. Um, went on a roll with some of these guys, and I'm like, you. you they can fill a room up. That's what they're good for. Mm. They can. They, they. They. They make a lot of money off of traveling and putting people in seats. But as of them doing comedy, being great at it, mm-hmm. it's not gonna last long. Cause now you at the water audience no. Mm. You can see the comments. Oh, I want to go see such and such. They not that funny. Yeah, they you can had, see the comments. Yeah, they had some clips on Instagram. Yeah, it's like, it, nah. Yeah, you got your million followers, but and you get a check. Yeah, from that. But other than that, you you it's going it's going to go downhill at the wall. Yeah, because people are going to stop coming to see you. They they the people you can't pull the audience. You can't trick the audience. You yet. can't. They you gonna can't. you can't. They gonna they, especially especially our people. Yeah, nah. At the wall, know. they gonna keep it. They gonna be honest. <laughs> they, <know laughs> they gonna support they you, but at the wall, like yo, the hell was I thinking? This ain't man? it. Yeah, this ain't it. You can't yeah. fool the audience, man. I hope y'all enjoying the episode, but I had to interrupt to talk about my new film, Regrets. Yes, my new award-winning film, Regrets, is streaming now on Tubi for free. You can watch it on your phone. You can watch it on your tablet. You can watch it on your TV. It's a heartfelt film that I'm really proud of, and I think you will enjoy it. All you got to do is download the app and type in Regrets. And again, it's free. So go watch it. Watch it with your fam. Share with your friends. And I think you will enjoy it. I'm really proud of this film. So go and watch Regrets and tell me what you think about it. Back to the episode. Speaking um, of comedy and stuff like that, you know, some people, they got it. Some people don't got it. Nah. You know, some cats, you know, they have their followers. But like you said, you can't you can't trick the audience, man. Nah, you know what nah, I mean? You can't nah. insult the intelligence of the audience. Now, when it comes to cats like Kevin Hart, right? Grew mm-hmm. up from, came from your area. What, what is, what makes, you know, I mean... Y- whether you like him or not, you've seen what he's done in the business oh, yeah. world and stuff like yeah. that. Um, what what gives people like Kevin Hart that that it factor? What makes him so successful rather than some of the other comedians that we grew up that's just as funny or funnier? Like, what what is he doing right? Do you know? Um, I say it's honesty, man. His truth. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, and he gives he gives the the game, mm-hmm. you know, people people want that. And he says right. that he's like people want to hold on to information. Mm-hmm. No, give it out. Listen, man, I used to, it, I used to get on stage and I used to bomb. And he mm-hmm. said, "Yo, I went to New York and I bombed." Mm-hmm. So that was like, oh shoot, it it was like it was like a, a okay cool. Then I started hearing how he talked when he's like, I used to mess up. He went broke. 
Really? Yeah, at the Soul Plane, um, people in Hollywood wasn't touching. Mm. He had a TV show that got canceled. Six episodes, he got canceled. So he had these six figure checks. But at the while, people were like, that's the guy in Hollywood that nobody messed with because everything he touched, um, everybody bootleg or got canceled. Mm. So he, he said that. So He was down and out at Oh, yeah, point. he was down and out at one point. Then he came out with his first comedy special. I'm a grown little man. That's my favorite one. Okay. Yeah. He, <laughs> that was the one that was like, I want to do comedy then. Yeah. I, I want to do comedy. Yeah. Then he then um that Steve Harvey book that he came out, um, Think Like a Man. Okay. That's what put him back oh, yeah. on a map. He's like, yo, that was the one with Will Packer that put him back on the map in twenty eleven. Mm-hmm. Cause he was down and out, man. Yeah. Yeah. He was down, man. I'm like, dang. Yeah. I need to hear that. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I mean the first thing I saw him on was Paper Soldiers. Yeah, you know what I mean. Funny as heck. Only got two hundred dollars for that movie. Two hundred dollars. Dang, Dash paid him two hundred dollars for that movie, man. <laughs> it was something to eat. It was like that, gas money. It's like yo, Dame only gave me two hundred dollars for that? that movie. Yeah, I never knew that. Yeah, dang. I ain't going to no movies, man. That was just deep, yeah. Man. That was just like you know what I mean. Put you on the map type of vibe. Yeah, right, here you he go. said that movie helped me because he that was his acting room. right when he went to auditions. So mm. yeah, now. Speaking like the industry again, you know, we have our heavy heavy hitters like you know the Denzels, the Will Smiths, the the Kevin Hart's and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, do you feel like these these powerhouses need to work more together? You know, people always talk about oh, you know, we need to create our own Hollywood and all this other crazy stuff. But even outside of that, do you feel like our heavyweights should be doing more work together? Because you never seen Denzel and, and Will Smith work together, like. Why is that? You know what I mean? Will Smith never worked with uh, um, yeah. Spike Lee. Um, you know, it was great to see Kevin Hart and one of my favorite actors, Wesley Snipes, on yeah, that the was True great. Story that joint, was which was super dope. But do you think <laughs> um, people need to be doing more work together? You know what I mean? More powerhouses? Or um, it's, just not, it's just not set it up that It can way? work. But, and I think about that. What, what is there out there left for them to do? Mm-hmm. Well, see, Snipes and Kevin Hart, that story was, was phenomenal, yeah. man. It was different. A lot of times you had these powerhouses together, they, they're cops. Yeah, buddy that, at the buddy. They buddy, buddy yeah. cops. They, that's it. But that, that it, it was dope, man. Yeah. That was dope, but uh, Will Smith and the Denzel together. Just because. You don't, you don't feel like people should do that just because. It has yeah. to have. Yeah. It has to be for a reason. It has to have some mm-hmm. meaning. It has to be good. Um, Yeah. So I mean, it, it, I mean, they got a good script. Other than them being cops, because I don't want to see <laughs> two powerhouses being cops no more. That's that's that's. <laughs> they had your Jackie <laughs> Chan and, and Chris. And all that stuff. They had your Rush Hour. Where you had your bad boys. You had well, yeah. we don't need Eddie Murphy anymore. and and whoever he played with. We don't yeah. need to see cops no more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, going back to like um, different roles and stuff like that, like in the typecast and stuff. Some people mm-hmm. don't like the roles that they're being casted for. Right, so it's like oh, I'm tired of getting casted for this, tired of getting casted for that. Mm-hmm. What can an actor do, or and what, or and or what do you do if you're looking for maybe a different kind of role? What are some things, some tips you think you know actors should do to start you know solidifying roles that are for them? It's a it's a lot of things you can either um I say write try to write a script or get together with somebody to put something together yourself right you know that's where nowadays i'm starting to learn this ain't right and start doing yeah. your own stuff yeah then getting a camera crew together just you know find somebody to pitch your own stuff together i mean mm-hmm. if i had no real okay any real i did have because a lot of films a few films i was in um the fin- the final product was horrible it wasn't good i'm like i went I, I i started this movie man the script was amazing it's called it was called sleep study okay and by the time they had a red carpet they had it at the club club, watched the movie. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> what happened? What the hell is this? Yeah. Like, even it's, the movie was Sleep Study. As it came up on the screen, it said Leap Stud. What? I'm like, so the S and the Y at the end, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> then as I'm talking, the words are coming out like two seconds later. It's not even mad. It's like I'm a, like, it wasn't like even matching. I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh. I'm really? like, even my kids like, daddy, this is... And this was at the premiere. Yeah, this was at the premiere. And I'm like, yeah, that that was horrible. I can't use none of this for nothing. 
you know. And and that's and that's that's the tough aspect about acting and filmmakers, right? And I see that a lot. Like people, like I, I work with people. You know, people get my films. They always have access to they, you know, they um, yeah. their scenes, whatever scenes you want. You can put it on your reel. You know, anything that I can do for people, I, I try. Um, but I've I've heard horror stories of like actors being in films one the film may never even come out no i've seen that before <laughs> like cats was like yo i've been in films and i've never even seen i ain't never even seen them come out then you have cats that's been in films and like you said you're like yo what is this this is not what i signed up for they had all the great camera work i'm like okay they got all this yeah, they, stuff they, 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 they had a joint they, like a train yeah that, then you see like what the you're like what happened it's like a bootleg, man. <laughs> I had all that good equipment, the lighting and everything. Who yeah. edited this? So, mm. and that's the thing. Like, do you feel like um, people are not taking their craft serious enough? Do you think people are not studying enough? I think that every day. I'm yeah. like, there's no way y'all taking your craft. Man. Everything y'all do. Yeah. Everything y'all do. There's no way you taking your craft serious. Yeah. I see a few people out here taking their craft serious. Yeah. Other than that, that's it. Yes. And I think that's um. I think that's something to really um, talk about, and that's like going back into the being the oversaturated thing, where it's yeah. like people are picking up these cameras, people are picking up microphones, people are models now. Like they got a thing called Instagram model, which yeah, is that's... like crazy, right? So <laughs> <laughs> people are doing these things, but they're not taking it serious. They're right. not really working on their mm-hmm. craft. It's like having a a, 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 vi- a a cameraman or somebody picking up a camera versus a true director that understands right. composition and all this other stuff. And it's like, you know, it, I think that's the gift, gift and the curse of, you know, the gatekeepers and stuff like that, mm-hmm. where it was like, okay, yeah, everybody couldn't get their films made, but nine out of 10 of them, they were at least quality films. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or quality, you know, you may not like the film and stuff like that, but the technical aspect was, was pretty much good. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, what, like, what, what, what do you want to say to, even filmmakers, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you yeah. want to say? Like, <laughs> you know, because I'm always encouraging, you know, quality. You know, I think we living in this quantity over quality thing where it's like, I just got to put out stuff. I got to put out stuff. Are you a quality guy or are you a quality guy? What do you think is important in this, this day and age? Um, I say both, but more quality? Yeah. You say? Yeah. I tell people, man, y'all, whatever you do, I got comedians hitting me up. And this a, it's a great feeling. Well, you got the younger comedians looking. They looking up to me, mm-hmm. like Kobe. I see you on every show, every week. Right. It's like, what I gotta do when I get them the game? Okay. And I can see that you're not serious. Mm. I told. I just gave. I spilled out everything. The whole thing. I do. There's people in my DM. Yo, I'm a guy from Delaware. I'm only 21 years old. I want to know how to do comedy, or I done hit stages. I'm like, all right. This is what you do. I done sat there with 20 minutes. Gave you the book. I gave you everything. Stop going to open mics. Start going to comedy shows. Asking. Get the number off the flyer. Ask, yo, can I get a guest spot? They will never, a lot of times, they will never say no. Mm. Oh, new guy. Let, just throw him up there. See, see what he's doing. Yeah, right a now. lot of times they, because people want to give, you know, um, new guys a shot. Yeah, absolutely. Then you can tell they, you're not serious. Mm. A lot of guys are like, yo, you, you're not serious. There's no way. And you can tell. That's, oh yeah. And it's like, you know, why, why, why are you taking up space? You yeah. Know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, you, I, I'm at that point space. where it's like, yo, I'm all for helping somebody that wants to come up. I'm all for giving game, pulling up because I think that's mm-hmm. what we need to do. But if you're not serious, why are you wasting your time and my, my time? time yes. You know what I'm saying? Especially yeah. if you're just giving somebody free game. You know what I mean? Taking time out your day to. You yeah, know, I look. gave you everything. What not to do? Because where I messed up at. Mm-hmm. Like I'm taking my time, I'll give you that. Yeah. You know, I'm saying this one this is my I'm watching TV, you know, yeah. football game on. Right. Now I'm like stopping, I gotta chilling. pause it. You know, this is what I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. You listening? That's yeah. it. They don't they don't <laughs> apply it, so Yeah. It's, but it's, I ain't gonna stop, I'm gonna still there's gonna be somebody out there that's gonna be like, that's right, cool, get I got it. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, do you feel like um how 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 do you talk more about the industry of like um, cause I hear a lot where people say you know, the industry is very clicky, you know, maybe Philly people only work with Philly people, Jersey people only work with Jersey people or particular types um, of groups or whatever the case may be. Do, do you feel like the industry is clicky? Do you feel like mm. your area is like, 
Or it's just like a natural thing to do, you know what I mean? Um, some some <laughs> some places, some people are clicky. I, I have no click. Yeah. I work with any and everybody. Right. I have I have no drama with nobody. Right. I, and I see this. I see people who who's uh they may have beef with somebody that's over here or right. I even see it with comedians. Really? Yeah, oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Especially especially I'm like, um, sometimes they be on the same show. Mm. Or be one comedian be like, yo, who they gotta tell her, ask the promoter who's on the show before you right. book me because I don't work with everybody. Mm. Now you want to stop your money? Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's yeah like the nah. whole, Who over at the party before I come? Yeah, nah, yeah. I'm not stop my money. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get this bread. Like, right. I just start, I just got good at being a comedian. <laughs> I'm just starting to get money. You know what I'm saying? So right. I'm, I, I'm cool with everybody. Man. Right, right, right. What's um, what's what's some of your um, your ultimate goals? Like in the comedian world, acting world. What's what's some of your your your, your um. Your plans I, for the year, the next three years. What's I want, um, I want to do an hour special, mm. and I and I want it to either be on on some type of platform like Netflix, okay, or um, something Hulu. Mm-hmm. You know, I want I want an hour special. A lot of comedians don't even have an hour. <clears throat> right. You know, I, I'm at the point where I, I got to get 50, 55 minutes, mm. which is good enough. That's a, that's 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 a nice. You know, three years ago, I didn't even have. 20 minutes really yeah yeah so now to be at the point where now i got i can do 50 minutes on stage and, and i want to film that be great it has to just shop it around that's what a lot of, that's what that's what a lot of comedians do a lot of people who be having these specials they shop it around okay you know um i want a, and i also want to uh, with comedy i want to bring back a late night something like a deaf comedy jam mm, yeah. there's nothing on tv right now <clears throat> that's like, like we have no stand up. You know, we need to bring that back. It was a comic view at one point. It was a Death Comedy Jam. Bad Boys of Comedy when Puffy did it. Um, Martin Lawrence First Amendment. And then we don't have none of that right now. Yeah. Kevin Hart tried it. He had this thing where he was going around the East City a okay. few years ago, picking three comedians, put it on Comedy Central. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I think he stopped. He did like two seasons, then he stopped doing that. That was that. Yeah, I want to have that late night, eleven o'clock at night. Yo, we got to get Raunchy, back to the stand. Raunchy, this, raw, yes. just, just that good we energy. Need that back, man. That was great. Why don't you think we have more of these type of things, man? Do you think? Um, cause some people have vision where it's like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna put other people on. We're gonna yeah. build this thing up. Or do, or do you think like people just have like more ego problems? Where it's just like, look, I just got to get mine. And legal, especially in Philly. Yeah. God said it the other day. A guy named Raymond Anthony. He said. Philly don't support Philly. Mm. You know, everywhere else can have this support, but Philly does not support Philly. It's like it's, a, it's an ego thing, thing or yeah. or some it's 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 a money thing, mm. and I'm like, put that you put that to the side. We can be great, man. We can all get it. We can all get it together, but everybody and their egos. That's what yeah. kills a lot. I see that a lot. That I think I think ego getting the way of so many opportunities. Oh yeah, in this industry, absolutely, man. and. You know, you said you see it in the comedian world. I see it in the film world. You know, mm-hmm. um, I'm always trying to, you know, set up like coalitions and associations and, okay. and, you know, trying to build with more people, man, because it's so easy. You know, it, the industry is a lonely industry. You know what I'm saying? To Absolutely. a certain extent, you know, it's, it's really lonely, man. And it's, you'll find yourself like trying to run off your own energy so much. You know what okay. I'm saying? And it's like, all right, what can cats do together? What you know, what else can be done, you know, to build more um, you know, in this industry? That's things like mm-hmm. I'm always looking, you know, to do. Just trying to figure out different ways that we can all just build and come up together. That was one of my things with doing the recession, being able to put, you know, a bigger group of characters together yes. to constantly just build and, and be <laughs> able to grow. You know what I'm saying? And I just had some of the best times, you know, filming those episodes because, you know, you become like, one thing I love about uh, film is you almost become like family, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you're, you're filming every <laughs> every day or every weekend. Um, getting new, getting new to uh, uh, other people, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They opening up, so y'all get to talk, and it's a great thing, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty dope. How do you feel about series versus film? Like, I don't know how many series you've done. I know you've done the recession. Hopefully, we not hopefully we're gonna be doing season two soon. Yes. For all y'all keep asking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Speaking that into consistency. Yeah, we putting it out there. Putting now, it out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
how do you feel about being able to like, you know, one and done with a with a feature film unless you have sequels versus like having a character that you can constantly like build and grow? How do you how do you feel about like the two different styles? I I really do a lot of um, well a lot of both. Mm-hmm. Um, at least a lot of both that was great. Got gotcha. you. You know so. But do you like the idea of being able to grow a character? Like yes, you know, I would like I would like to I would definitely like to do that because you build in each season. Mm-hmm. So, you know I ain't, like I said I, ain't, I haven't done a lot um, of, of work where it was like web series or a TV show or anything like that to keep building on the character. Mm-hmm. But I would I would definitely love that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, well they say like TV is like the the golden era right now, man. It's a lot of good shows. A lot of you know, yeah, quality so many, not just good shows, all these damn platforms that's coming out. Yeah. I just found out something about Peacock. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. gosh, wait, HBO Max, yeah. you got Hulu, Netflix. Yeah, that's a lot of money, man. That's a that's, that's a <laughs> there's opportunities, man. There's opportunities. Put work out there. That's why you gotta have the work mm-hmm. because, like you said, it's these platforms now that need that thirsty for content. Yeah, you know absolutely. What I'm so we need to be hitting the ground running, getting this work, you know, right. out there. I think that's 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 real important. Oh, and my goal for uh, t- t- film, I would like to be in something. Um, yeah, like with the Will Smiths, the Denzels, you know, mm-hmm. to be a uh, co-star. Okay, you know what I'm saying I don't want to just say to be in a movie. I'm, they say uh, be careful what you ask for. I mm-hmm. want a speaking role. I want to be really supporting or feature, okay. like I said, or star in a okay. movie with some of these great actors. Man, I know I got what it takes. Right, you know, I've been grinding and and and. No matter what it is, I know I can do it. Mm. Whatever character, whatever character it is. Right. So wearing a dress. I ain't doing that. You hear it. You ain't, <laughs> ain't putting on a dress. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, <laughs> any other thing else, I, I I can do it. I done you played good. every character already. You know, from a drug addict, drug dealer, good father, bad father. I done played a rapist one time. Mm-hmm. That was rough, but got through it. But. Yeah, you gotta. <laughs> you know, it's the, the the great thing about um, acting and filmmaking. You can tap into so many different personalities and worlds and yeah. stuff like that um you always been a class camp you said you, you've been a class clown and stuff like yes. that. yes do you ever feel like um do you ever use you know your your acting um your comedic side to kind of like um you know like when you're shy and you mm-hmm. use as like an outlet do you use any of this for like an outlet or are you just well people, just without acting and just in the yeah, like um, like do you use acting as like an outlet? Sometimes you just need to express yourself a certain way, or you need to be in front of a crowd. Like for me, it's like I have to write. Like I need it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, but you 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 never really you never was like a shy kid, right? No. Nah. Okay. So what is it that um, what is it that draws you into the comedy and and the acting? What is, what is the the need? Is it to tell the stories? Is it yes. performance? It's the performance, tell a story, get in front of people, audience, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It seemed like, um, like I was in LA for um, for the uh, acting expo. Okay. And it was on stage, and it was a guy giving out these, these awards in front of like eight hundred people. And I'm at the table, and I'm like, I want to go up there on that stage so bad mm. in front of all these people, and just give me three minutes on the mic. Mm. And it was eating me up. I'm like, damn, I want to go up there. Just, I just want to go, I I just, go yeah. up there. Just give me the mic, man. <laughs> right, right. It was eating me up, man. I was like, just, just, just. I just want to go up there. Yeah. So it, it, it's just that, I man. That's my, it's my passion. It's what I love to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember when I first started, started acting, um, and uh, I was with my kid's mother, mm-hmm. and she wasn't supportive. Mm. So I broke up with her. Mm. Like I finally find something that 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 makes my soul happy. Yeah, and you ain't supportive. Yeah, bro, I was like, oh no, it's time to go. <laughs> time to go. Tell the kids, daddy, leave mommy. <laughs> He's not getting back together. I can't deal with the insecurities and the jealousy, right. and that's it. I'm glad you brought that up. How important is having the right partner for this industry, this dream that we chasing, right? Because yes, it, it's you know, very important. If you want to be a doctor, there's pretty much a blueprint to do that, right? Yeah. Go to college, get a good grade, go to medical school, boom, boom, boom. You could pretty much be a doctor. You could be a lawyer. You could be a teacher, right? Filmmaking, acting, comedians. There's no blueprint, right? So right. we're always trying to figure it out. 
and we need that support of we need that support so in your eyes how important is that i mean obviously you left somebody that mm-hmm. wasn't supportive right how important is that it's super important you need somebody that's really sec- secure mm-hmm. of what you're doing and who you are i have somebody like that i have a uh, shout out to Peaches. That's my my, my that's my my, my lady. Mm-hmm. She is super supportive. I know she's supportive because at the end of these shows, there'd be a lot of women. They'd be like, "Oh my God, she was funny. Mm-hmm. Can I take a picture with you? Hug." Mm-hmm. A lot of them sneak a kiss on my mm-hmm. cheek. Right. And it, and they're real flirtatious. Okay. And she'll be the one that be like, "Go ahead, baby, give me your phone. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take the picture." Right. They it should be right. They be like, no, 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 sweetheart, put your leg up on him. Yeah, yeah. Okay. she'll do I all think. that. So <laughs> she's like, I ain't worried about that. You coming home with me tonight? Right, I'm good. These women they bring may not even see no more. Mm. So let them flirt with you tonight. That's all right. We good. As long as I ain't doing nothing crazy, right? That's disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Which I will never do. But right. she, she, she's right great. there. She, she, she great. I never meet a female like that before. Mm. So, so she's so secure. That's, I love that's her. super dope. Now, outside of that, like what? What 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 does an artist need from with that type of support? Is it encouragement when you're down? Mm-hmm. Is it like you said, just being your your uh, your number one supporter? Like, what does that support look like? Because sometimes uh, a female or a male, because males get jealous too. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? What is it that we don't understand, or what is it that that person that isn't supportive they don't understand, or maybe they don't realize like. Like, how can we help them out? Like, what is, you know what I mean? What is a supportive (laughs) spouse when it comes to that? You know what I'm saying? You can do everything. You you can can tell them. You can bring them on with you. You can show them. Like you said, you write. You can be like, babe, listen, this is how I'm going to write this script. Give me some ideas. I'm going to give you this idea how you think it is. Mm -hmm. If they're not supportive, Mm -hmm. then... I don't know, man. I, I, because <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm quick to get away from somebody fast. Got you. I can get. I don't give a damn who you what are. It is, yeah. I don't, you can be my son about to be 18, and I'm telling him like, look, if you ain't got your, you ain't got it together. Look, you can, you can't be in the house with me no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want you to be great, just like me. Right. You about to be a grown man. My son about to be 18 in two months. Hey. Really? Yeah. You got to be 18 in March. Go. I got to grow. Okay. I'm telling like, yo, you don't know what you want to do. You got yeah. to graduate high school. Yeah. I mean, you got your job working at Wawa, but what you want to do What's with your nice, life? And he yeah. don't know. And I'm like, yo, you got to figure it out. It and if you don't know, I'm a, I'm a, we going to work on it. Yeah. I'm but if you just want to be lazy, I'm like, you, you know can't, you have to go live with your mom. Yeah. Because he yeah. live with me. So I'm like, you have to you gotta go live do with something. Mom. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that energy is like, you know, um, it's, you know, it's it's so many opportunities out here, but it's also a lot of, you know, lazy mentalities. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Where it's like, people don't want nothing. They want everything, but they want everything handed to them. Yeah, and that's, you and know what I mean? that is not the way this life is. I thought it was. I'm like, oh, this is going to be easy. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it ain't work out like that. Man. Yeah. Late night, early mornings, and mm-hmm. just fighting for your goals and dreams and Something you have a you got to keep going and going. I'm yeah. getting. I'm at the point now. I'm like, yo, I'm starting to see a lot of success off this. Yeah, and I'm eleven years in. So, man, like they say, overnight success take ten years you know, <laughs> or more. Now, people think yes, because man. if you get on, if, I mean, you you're doing your thing, you're growing. But yeah. if you get a comedy special tomorrow on Netflix, they'll be like, damn, Kobe is an overnight success. But they don't realize. Oh yeah, what? what you have done for the last ten years? What you know oh, what I'm saying? Man. So, what what would you say about that? What who who is Kobe? What don't people know about you or your work ethic that maybe they don't see? Because you know people are yeah people, people are saying all kinds of stuff behind all, your back right oh, now. Oh, this dude got it, man. Yeah. You had it since day one. I'm like, no, <laughs> you don't you don't know how I turned down positions because I worked in the kitchen for 18 years and they asked me to be a chef mm-hmm. and I turned that down because I wasn't going to. Uh, uh, commit to working at night when I know I got rehearsal at 7 o'clock. Mm. I know I got to um, um, get my kids and do homework with them or take them to rehearsal. Or oh, I got this comedy show tonight. I got to be there at 7 o'clock. Mm. So I wasn't worried about I would work a regular 9 to 5, but that's it. Gotcha. I need to get off at 5 so I can go do time. this. Mm. You know, because this, this is what I love to do. Yeah. I got to be in New York tonight. So I, it's like that drive, and, yeah. and then you know, then driving to New York, not even getting paid, not even paid to go do this show. Right. 
you know, it's a guest spot. Mm, so you just go on. I'm grinding, man. You know, I ain't getting, you know, New York, you know, you got to fill the gas tank up and them damn toes. The toes, bad. That's Gosh, a $50 trip man. on some rip. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm coming out my pocket, yeah, you know. Yeah. So it, it was a lot, man. Then it didn't, with the stage plays and rehearsals, you know. Right. Wasn't, it, it wasn't a lot of money in that. Yeah. A lot of times I was going broke, but I was happy. You were still doing what you love. Yeah, still doing yeah. what I love. Yeah. And I think um, people don't realize, like, I don't know if it's this gener- generation or what, um, but they want they want to be where Denzel is now, now in a sense like they don't want to put in the work to get to that next level. You know what I'm saying? They already want to be where, you know, where we see our our stars and our heroes, where it's like I want to be them tomorrow, but it's like it doesn't work like that. You know what I'm saying? Denzel's also taking acting classes. These yeah. people don't never even step foot in the acting Oh, class. man, that's, that's another you know, thing. No, they too. don't even know about building it. characters or working and having mm-hmm. a scene study with your partner. Yeah. You want to be where he at? Oh. You ain't even Still ready. what? That's how what, 60? 60 years old, man. Still putting in work. Yeah. He's Still going to class. 40 years in the game. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I see it all the time where it's just like, or cats, first time, they like, oh, yeah, I want to be I want to be the lead. Guys ain't never acted a day in their yeah, life. And it's just like, on, man. It's it's almost disrespectful, you know what I'm saying? It, oh, it is. You know, it's, it, it's it, really yeah. it's really a disrespect to your time and, and the work that we putting into the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just like somebody coming up to you and be like, "Yo, Kobe, I, I want a headline," but they ain't never did a three minute set. Right, it's like, exactly. It's like it's cool to have the vision, it has the aspiration, but it's like, yo, you know where you got to start. We all got to start right, and build bottom, up. Man. You know what I'm saying? You got to build up. What's uh What's next? What's next for Kobe? What's What's going on for the next? You know what you got going on now? Um, working on getting on TV. You know that's that's the goal. Okay. Getting on TV, get, meeting these casting directors, um, and agencies. Mm. Getting with these agencies, man. Yeah. That's the only way. Cause now I'm saying you got that's the way to get on TV to get a good role. Um, right. an agency. Anybody can just you know be background. You can look up a newspaper or anything. Mm-hmm. We need background for actors. You, Go, you can just go, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. all right, I'm trying to move beyond I'm that. trying to move beyond that. I've done the background thing. So, mm-hmm. I'm trying to be in a speaking role on TV. Mm. But no matter what it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's it. So, like I said, I got I to gotta meet tomorrow with the agency in New York. Um, I had a couple in LA. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah how, 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 how important is it to be um, proactive in your career as far as... Um, Going out there and getting it, figuring out your own, um, just being, you know, your own engine. You know, some people just kind of like, oh, I'm just let everything happen. You know, how important is it to, to, to go get it, to go figure it out, try to book your own roles? Mm-hmm. Up until, I mean, obviously, until you have, not even until, but and having an agent is a little different. But how important is it to be, you know, active, you're just a spokesperson for your own career? You got to be very active, you know, you your own... It's your face. It's you. I mean, mm-hmm. your brand. Yeah. You gotta. You gotta grind it out, and you gotta stay positive. You know, because right. you know, you know, our people. They you <laughs> cancel culture. You do something crazy. Ah, nah, nah. You saw what he did six yeah. years ago yeah. when he is in the eighth grade. We ain't yeah. messing with him. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Like, come on, man. I done found God. I done prayed. Y'all mm-hmm. still holding on to stuff. So yeah, man. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta grind it out, man. Right. It is a hustle. It is a hustle. It's a grind, man. So I'll just say consistency, mm-hmm. dedication, and faith. Whatever God you believe in, you keep going. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of, like, cancel culture, I think Steve Harvey was talking about it. Um, talking about it's bad for comedy. Like, how do you how do you feel about that? Like, cancel culture, uh, people being, well, they say, uh, too... Um, too um, Freaking like too sensitive and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you think it limits you as a comedian on what you can talk about and how you can talk about it, or do you don't believe it? You just go up there and, and say what's what's yeah what's real to you. Um, it can it can it it, it depends on the subject, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, depends on the topic, you know. Who 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 just said Betty White just died? You can't go up there on stage now. Mm-hmm. Betty White joke. Yeah, not the right <laughs> time. Right. Not, it's not the right time. Because the people will do that. They be like, ah, well, got this joke about Betty White. Whoa, she just died. Relax. All right. Yeah. You know, comedy, 
people got they 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 write to anything they whatever they see hear what they can make a joke out of no matter what it is mm -hmm. somebody deaf somebody burp somebody um got shot <laughs> and lived <laughs> right. you know it is is they comedians gonna make it just if it's funny People are going to tell, they're going to tell a joke. That's, they're going to tell a joke no matter what it is. <laughs> Do you feel like a comedian can take something too far? Do you think a, you can take a jet too far? Or would, in comedy, in that space, mm -hmm. there's no there's no limits. Do you feel like comedy it should be the only space that you can kind of push the envelope oh, a little yeah, bit? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yep. Do you feel like it, you can take a joke too far? Yeah. Do you believe that too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a guy, I got a guy... Um, <laughs> From Philly named Funny Mike, and he he um he talks about Muslims. The jokes is super hilarious, right. but when he does these jokes, I sit back in the crowd and see, and it be do these dudes with these bears, right, and right. they be they be Muslim, and they be I see them cracking up at For it, real? man. <laughs> and in my mind, and I see him keep going and going and going with this joke. He's squeezing the living out this joke. <laughs> He been doing this for years, but I'll be sometimes. And one time, because I one time he did say somebody um at the end of the show checked him. He's like, "Yo, man, you ain't supposed to be talking about Muslims like that." Mm -hmm. And he said, and, and it was like, "Yo, but it's comedy. Yeah, you know, everybody else is in there laughing. We had that time. Yeah, we just telling jokes. You know, that's it. We telling jokes. So yeah. sometimes a, a joke can go too far. Mm. You know. Have you ever had a joke that was like? You didn't think it was too far, and then it went too far, and you're like, all right, I got to scrap that from my my thing. And or have you ever had a joke um, that didn't work, and you almost was about to cut it off, and then you do it again, and it works? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think what joke I did. Um, a couple of jokes I've done did. Um, <laughs> just... I remember one time, I, I don't even use this joke no more. I said, yeah, man, I just... My landlord, I don't live in North Philly no more because it's bad. You know, my landlord got me a nice ass house. I'm moving next week. I just moved to Camden, New Jersey. Nice place. Mm -hmm. And and <laughs> certain places, people will crack bust out laughing like Camden. You better off staying in North Philly. Mm -hmm. Other places be like, uh, wasn't yeah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my God. Right. But right. yeah, sometimes I'm. <clears throat> Some jokes get hit and miss certain places. Right. I'm like, how can this joke work here? And it, it can be the same night. Mm -hmm. I can go do a show in, in Jersey somewhere and a joke don't work. Then I can go leave and do a 10 o'clock show in Philly and a joke is it's, killing. It's, it's and that happens all the time. Mm. You know, to this day with every comedian in the world. Really? Kevin Hart working on his new stuff. He was just in Philly last month and he's working on his new stuff. Okay. For his uh, next special. He's like, sometimes a joke may work here. Mm -hmm. You know, not work here. I got a joke where I talk about, um, I say these kids got it so good and um, they 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 don't know about struggle. Mm -hmm. See, in the 90s, you know what I'm saying, we, we went through, it was 96 inches of snow on the ground. We still went to school. We went through that struggle. Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? I can't go say that joke in somewhere like, Texas, yeah. they don't get snow. They don't get snow. <laughs> so <laughs> it's right. So it's certain jokes you go, uh, uh, where it's certain places. Got you. How do you know when to keep a joke in? Do you keep a joke in if, or it has to hit? If it bombs enough, I guess you take it out. Like, how do you know? Yeah. Like, all right, it hit. It hit in Jersey. It didn't hit in Philly. Now I got a joint in New York. Do I? T how do you know when mm. to keep that joke in? Or you don't. You just play. How, how does that work? It depends. Um, <laughs> it, it, that's what I'm saying. These sometimes just it just. But when you know your hit is gonna hit, every, no matter where you yeah. at. I, that's the, those are the ones you work. But sometimes you know, after a while, you gotta you gotta try new stuff. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, people don't already be like, yo, I done saw that joke already. Got you. So you know, especially with me being from Philly, I'm always doing shows in Philly. I gotta sometimes be like, All right, I gotta start switching things you up. Gotta have. Yeah, new so material. I mean, new material. Um, but if a joke don't don't, that's don't like skeptical, it. like that, it work here and not here, then it work here and not. You jump, you gotta play with it. Yeah, yeah, you gotta play with it. See, 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 um, how the crowd react. Mm. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um. Now, <clears throat> another com uh, comedy question. Like, say you you going you going on stage. Um, maybe it's three or four acts in that night or three mm -hmm. or something like that. 
how does it work with working with other comedians? Say if you go on stage, I mean, you going up next in a in a in a, com- a, a comic just he like killed it. He killed right. it. Does it ever like play with your head like, oh, I gotta top that or um like how does how does that work with like because I remember like being a hip hop artist, you know, we doing open mics, last artist killed it, and it's like, all right, okay, now nah, I gotta yeah, I gotta man, come here. <laughs> Or you just kind of be in your own space. You know like, who was it crazy? Work? Jay-Z said that about DMX. Oh, really? In an interview a couple months ago. Oh, he I said, heard that. Uh, I think it was the Hard Night Lights or where DMX went on stage before him mm-hmm. <laughs> and took the crowd on an emotional roller coaster. He took him here. He prayed. He cried. He mm-hmm. killed it. And he, Jay was like on the side like, I got to follow that. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like, I ain't got that type of energy. Like, so, I can't do that. But he's yeah. like, I still gotta go out there. Yeah. He had line in the show, mm-hmm. so I always, I when he did that, when he said that after DMX died, you know, I seen an interview. Um, matter of fact, was on 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 that um, LeBron James oh, on joint. HBO, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the, the barbershop, barbershop joint. joint. Yeah. yeah, and he was, like, and I'm like, yo, was like, yeah, that's yeah, just like go. comedy, man. That's mm-hmm. just like, but that's that that's um, that happened the other night too. Really, um. I went on stage and I killed it, but it should the show should go up by okay. each comedian. Sometimes it can either hinder and the energy go down. Mm, if the first comic just too thorough, did everybody? Else? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it can go like uh, and the crowd will be like, oh, well, I like this comedian. This comedian was okay. Mm-hmm. The last comedian was horrible. God mm-hmm. told me that. It's like, yo, man, I was in Atlantic City Saturday night. You should have went last, cause that last comedian was trash. <laughs> really? Last comedian got paid a lot of money. He ain't to get paid the most money. Yeah, but yeah, so. yeah, I understand what you're saying, but mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. it, it it can sometimes. Gets and I learned that from a guy named Tommy Too Smooth, one of the best. Oh yeah, I know Tommy Too Smooth. You know Tommy? Smooth. Yeah, funny. This dude. Funny. One time I was scared to follow him. He's like, "Don't worry, you got it." I'm like, "I don't know, Tommy." Uh, this was like five years ago, and I was just mm-hmm. started to get my feet wet and starting to get funny. And he went on it, and I followed him. Mm-hmm. That right there, I always think about that. Build my confidence up. Mm, yeah, I never that. thought I. And there's a lot of people who can't follow that guy. Yeah, it was like, who I gotta go after that. To this day, I'm Stay like, <laughs> yeah, dudes, I see, I see big, big dudes. Now, can't follow Tommy, man. Yeah, some is just like it don't matter. They're gonna kill it regardless. Yeah, like, they yeah. gonna come, and you better be prepared. You know what I mean? Um ask you another question about that like um now you know you playing off the crowd and stuff like that right you Mm -hmm. know everything is about the crowd have you ever like felt out the crowd maybe another comic is 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 doing this thing and you and you're seeing like certain jokes are hitting or not hitting maybe the crowd it's getting or not getting have you ever like changed what you were going to perform based on how you felt like the crowd was participating yeah have you done that? Yeah, absolutely. Really? Because um, the uh, <clears throat> just just because you react off the crowd, mm-hmm. you know. Sometimes I can expand a joke, and if they're not getting it in the middle, I can sometimes cut the joke off. Okay. And let me jump to another joke. Okay, kind of move forward. Right. If they cracking up, I can keep tagging it and adding to the same joke. The same thing. You know. Okay. But otherwise, if I see that they not giving me the energy I want, I'm like, all right, <clears throat> let me go to another joke. Mm. And that and that happens, man. Comedy is something. <clears throat> comedy is rough, man. It's, it's rough. You know, you gotta know your audience. I I I love comedy. I love to laugh. You know, I never consider myself funny. That's why I always wanted to write a a, um, a comedy movie. But I'm okay. like, you know, I'm not that funny. But I'm asking you so many of these comedian questions because I always. It's interesting to tap into the mind of a comedian, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I always think it was interesting, like, because me, <clears throat> I mean, I've always been a shy kid, then I got into hip-hop, then I started to direct and all this other stuff, and I just eventually came out of my shell, you know what I'm saying? Public speaking and all that, I never could do that, and then eventually I was I was okay with all that stuff, okay. just because I, I warmed up to it. But, like, from your perspective, just kind of, like, tapping into your mind before mm-hmm. we get up out of here, like, what is that feeling like when you're up on stage? And... What is it like when they're not getting it, and what are they, what is it like when you're killing it? Can you kind of like take me through that that ment that mental <laughs> state that you go through? Because to me, it seems like the scariest thing in the world to try to. I think that's one of the hardest professions in the world to be able to go on stage and make people mm-hmm. laugh. 
Oh yeah. Do you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, it's like I I feel. I, I, and I say this: anybody can run for president. Everybody can be a comedian. I believe that. Because it's that that stage it's and hard. that is you up there by yourself. You can't you go help. You already got the crowd looks at you already with this attitude of, I paid my money. You better yeah. be funny. Yeah. Yeah. They always look. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, why people act like that. It's a weird thing. I paid my money. Like you you be black people. Black, I paid my money. Black people you the better. Yeah. It's the better <laughs> attitude. And it sticks I better out. Laugh. You better yeah. be funny. It's, people told me that. <laughs> really? Are you? Are you? I never seen you perform. You better be funny. I'm like, why would that you? even be? Like, what, like <laughs> get, let me get on stage first. Gosh, Lee, you already got this in your mind already. So yeah, that's crazy. So again, how how is that? How are you like? Are you are you in your head when you're when you up there, or are you just kind of letting it letting it flow? Like, what is what is is it a lot of pressure? No, you don't feel no pressure more. when you're up there. I don't really get as nervous depending on the show and who's there. Okay. Um. But yeah, I just let it flow. I see, I see, I see guys. They be like, "Hold up, I need time to myself." They got the headphones on. They they backstage. They I'm like, I, I do every, I do whatever. Yeah. Come, you know, talk to me. I will be in my phone until three minutes. About three minutes before they call me on stage, I'm in the zone. Now I'm rocking. I'm by the stage. Like, all right, they about to call my name. That's it. You go through that moment and then yeah, I go through that. Before it's, it's it was like the morning of. I'm like, oh my yeah, gosh, exactly. I got a show tonight. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what I'm gonna do? You think about it all day. All day, it's on my mind. <laughs> I don't even think about it till I get to the show. You know. <laughs> ah, one last question before we we, we 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 close up out of here. Um, crowd wise, is it harder for you to make a hundred people laugh or? Ten people at a birthday party. What? What's? Is it a difference? Does it matter? Like when uh, speaking of the Hard Knock Life tour, they were talking about like DM, um, Red and Meth. They said since they was the opening act, mm -hmm. they would come out there and people wouldn't even be in their seats at the time. That's how early they were going. So people were still going out there, Damn. and they was like, "Yo, they still had to perform." You know what I mean? Yeah. DMX and them are it's jam packed. When we get out there. The whole front might just be empty, but you still, still got to perform. perform. So it's like, for you, is it is it like, do you prefer bigger crowds? Um, is it like a little like nerve wracking when it's maybe not enough people? Like how how's that for you? Um, Have you ever thought I, about that? Oh yeah, I I prefer <clears throat> when it's a lot of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I don't know for some reason, and um, Tom Too Smooth told me this. He's like, give the same energy you'll give to five hundred people. Give that same energy. To five people that's there. Mm, okay. Give it. And I'm like, I understand that, but it's hard, man. I yeah. can't. It's. I guess it's a mental thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if it's five people, I'm not gonna go in like I would for five hundred, five hundred, fifty, or seventy-five. I'm like, oh, that's a lot of people. So, right. I don't know. I don't know. But I rather I prefer the 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 big crowd. The big crowds. Tell the world how they can find you. How can they connect with you? How can yeah. they book you? And um, <laughs> well, that's always great. Give give a um, you know close it out with you know words of advice or you know anything that you want the people to know about Kobe. Yeah, man. Uh, I just say whatever it is that you want to do in life, you keep going, um, keep grinding. Whatever that passion is, whatever use the gift God bless you with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of people make excuses, man. Don't make no excuses if you got kids or if you whatever it is. You fight for what you want, you know. I'm a prime example. Right. You know, I I I push my kids out the way and mm -hmm. say, "Listen, this is what I want to do." All right, right? you still got you your life. come with me, and I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you I left my um kid's mother because she wasn't supportive. She had so to go. She wasn't. She had to go. You know, we had to break <laughs> up. You ain't support me. You you insecure about what I want to do. Move to the side. It ain't gonna work. You know, and that's yeah. the that's that's my mentality. I had you in the way of what I want to do. No matter who you are, I'm gonna move you to the side, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna keep going. It's mm -hmm. this pro. I look at this thing as it's a private jet. I'm on. I'm going up. Going up. You, you gonna be on it with up. me, or you gonna have to, you know, go. take that parachute and jump out. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean. You know what I'm saying. So keep that first. Keep going. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, all social media. Kobe Jack C O B Y J A C K K. Man, um, I got a lot of big things happening. You know, mm -hmm. look out for me. Don't blink because you gonna miss something. You gonna miss something, man. You heard it first. 
Kobe Jack, comedian, actor. My brother is doing his thing, man. Follow him. He's a funny dude. You know, follow him on Instagram, man. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man, got a lot of great things going on. So, you know, that's another episode. Your favorite director, please subscribe to the podcast. Yep. You know what I mean? And let's build. You can find me on Dream Boy Vision. And we got a lot of projects, man, coming out. You know, we got the Recession 2, uh, Devlin Red Wine, Born Center, and some other things. So I'm really excited. And we will see you on the next episode. My brother, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't wait to work with you again, man. Absolutely. I appreciate you coming on the show. Recession, um, season two. Look out coming. for that. We here. All right. All right. I forgot see my you. character name, but I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all.